I'm going to talk about dark dahlias and they are really a great passion of mine and have been for about 20 years. I remember I first saw this one which is called Rip City in Monet's garden at Giverny in France and um, I was with Jonathan Buckley who I still work with. It's one of our first shoots for the Bold and Brilliant Garden and we were walking through and I just fell on this dahlia that's sort of black, crimson black in the middle and then fades out to a sort of really rich Ribena purple. Uh, on the at the back of the flower, just absolutely incredible. Really quick, vigorous grower. Uh, bulks up so you can divide it every year. It's just a massive, massive performer. So, so that's Rip City. And then I'm also completely mad on this one, which is like a really dark black sea urchin crossed with a sea anemone. So it reminds me of kind of rock pool in Scotland or in Cornwall or somewhere. And I love that one. That's called Chanois Black Cat. And then. Because of the bee and butterfly and pollinator quest, which I'm also very keen on, and providing flowers uh, which give nectar and pollen, this one, which is called Bishop of Auckland, is also a favourite. This delicious velvet texture, and each of those at the middle is a nectary and is full of nectar. And so if you see that in the garden, it's always alive with butterflies and, and bees. And then this rather neat one, it's called Joey Morella, and uh, again, really dark, really rich, really good performer, really good vase life. So that's another cracker. And the final one in the ultimate, amazing, sublime, dark dahlia collection is the darkest, darkest of all, which is here, um, tucked in at the back. And you can see how rich it's like, sort of an espresso, a double espresso, and that's called Sam Hopkins. So what an amazing array of different dailies, all with different flower forms, but in this really rich colour range. And I'm going to use them in an arrangement. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the red auric or atroplex, which is something that you can also eat when it's a baby leaf in the spring. It self-sows, and, um, and so you'll find it sometimes in catalogues as a salad leaf uh, or as a foliage plant, because in the autumn it forms these wonderful queen-like seed pods. And, uh, and so makes a really good, long-lasting foliage plant. And is particularly good for its scale to arrange with dahlias, which, and, it, and it looks at its best at exactly that time of year. So it's, it's perfect with dahlias, really. And um, so that's going to be my first foliage into my favourite of all vases, which is called a narrow vase. And normally, when I arrange in a vase, I'd use a pin holder. But the great thing about a narrow vase is because it's got this slight belly here and it flares out here, it is literally the perfect shape. Because what happens is that when you put a stem in, you can just lodge it across the vase like that and it just sits uh, across. And so you get this nice flaring which is emphasised by this slightly flaring neck. I am not at all keen on the straight cylinders because everything looks like this, this incredibly sort of uptight and, and too sort of vertical and I like things to be a bit more graceful and elegant and sort of coming out as much as they come up and, um, and so the narrow vase is, is really it just makes that so easy to do and once you've got a bit of a web of stems in by sliding them across almost creating a grid you then don't need your pin holder because you can then just slide these in and they sit in the grid so I've got my atroplex in as my first foliage, and then I'm going to use the wonderful acid green plant called Molicella levis, or Bells of Ireland. And all these are things that are easy to grow from seed, and all you need to do with the Molicella, and this dries too, is I, I just remove most of these little side leaves going up the stem, because they actually go brown, whereas the little shell-like Flowers, or in fact canises, don't go brown. Of course, they aren't the actual flower, because if you look right in here, that's the, in fact, that's the flower. And so these are brilliant for pollinators too. They've got a classic salvia-like flower, but inside this green calyx. So um, they're really good for us, for flare arranging, and they're really good for the bees and butterflies. So it's, it's one of my really favourite garden annuals. half hardy annual that you sow in March or April and um, then you pick it really sort of July through to October time 
and then of course it dries. So pop some of those in, again coming out as well as coming up. And the great thing about Monocella is that it's a wonderful contrast to the Atroplex, you know, the lovely acid green. So how easy is that? You just plonk them in really. And then finally in terms of foliage, I'm going to use the wonderful dill. And I'm using this as much for its scent as well as its beautiful colouring. And we grow lots of dill here. Uh, it self sows, of course. And so if you have an empty patch of ground, you'll find it popping up all over the place. Um, and we sow some to absolutely make sure that we have lots of it. So I'm just going to use that as my sort of airy filler, foliage filler. And then I'll have my three foliage in place. And whenever I'm making a mixed arrangement, I always use three foliage. Um, it, it just If you use one, which a lot of florists do, I, I just find it a bit dull. And also what you'll find is if you use three, it, it almost can be an arrangement in itself. It hardly even needs the flowers. So perhaps you've got lots of foliage in your garden but not so many flowers. And then you could always buy some flowers, uh, but you will need to buy many fewer if you've made a wonderful arrangement already with the foliage. So when I'm teaching here, beginner flower arranging, I always say to people, if you're happy to put the arrangement with foliage alone on your kitchen table, then add your flowers. But don't think of foliage as just an adjunct, as you know the sort of boring filler. It isn't. Honestly, it is as important as the flowers themselves, if you want really natural style, garden style arrangements, which is definitely what I want. Um, and so... Primary foliage here, what I would call primary, which is the thing that provided the main structure to the bunch, is Atroplex Hortensis rubra. And then I filled it out with the wonderful Bells of Ireland, or Molicella levis. And then I've just got my airy filler um, and sort of upper story, just standing a little bit proud of the others, which is dill or Nathan graviolins. And once I've got all that in place, I'm ready to move on to my flowers. That's great. So for the flowers, I've got all these beautiful black dahlias. But if I had them on their own, they would be on the sombre side. So in fact, I've picked some incredible orange tithonia or Mexican sunflower as my contrast. So I've got all my lovely rich blacks. In go the dahlias, and just really, pretty willy-nilly, randomly threading them through the foliage. Do it from the back, otherwise I'll obscure the arrangement. So this is Rip City. Bishop of Auckland. Jerry Morella. City again, and whenever you're making an arrangement, don't just think about the front, think about the back too. And so, once you've got quite a lot in, you should just start walking around and always arrange it in the round. It's incredibly important for it not to appear rather old fashioned and for it to appear kind of more relaxed and natural. Um, arranging it in the round is, is key. And I like having things coming out like that, coming out at you and up. All kind of like a really dynamic firework display. Just look at that one. I mean, that's Rip City, isn't it? It's just, it's just a stunner. And so no front and no back to this arrangement. You can look at it from any side and it should look just as good. Now, time for the colour contrast. So then, just a little splash of what I call the gate crusher. The colour contrast going in now. Not too much um, to kind of overpower it or just, just 
a splash of it to enliven it really. This is one thing that you have to take care of with the tithonia, that it has got these hollow stems just below the flower. Is it hollow all the way up? No, it isn't. It's, yeah, it's just there. And they, they can quite easily just do that. So you just have to be a bit careful when you're picking them. But, um, and that's where a bucket like this is just so brilliant, because it means you're not cramming things into a vase and, and, and so then breaking, and sorry, into the bucket as you're picking and so then breaking. It's going a bit floppy. Breaking the necks. So that's why I tend to use a divided bucket for flowers like that that are a little bit sensitive.